Father, we bless you. We bless you. We honor you. We honor you. We as your children, we learn to honor you. We learn to honor you, Father. We learn to give value to you. We learn to give you the respect due your name. Father, we open up our mouths in your presence. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. You worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy. Yes, Lord, we acknowledge you this morning. Hallelujah. You're worthy of the praise, oh God. Worthy of the glory, oh God. I'm going to encourage you. Do what your flesh won't let you do this morning. Do what your flesh is telling you you can't do this morning. Go on and bless the Lord. Go on and magnify the Lord. Let God meet you in your place of praise. Let God meet you in your place of worship. Call on the name of the Lord. Say, touch me this morning, Father. Touch me this morning, Father. Touch me this morning, Father. Heal me this morning, Father. Fill me this morning, Father. I don't want to play church, oh God. Wrap your arms around me this morning, Father. Stir up something on the inside of me this morning. Stir up the gift in me. Set my heart on fire this morning, Lord God. Nobody but you can do it, oh God. Nobody but you can do it. Hallelujah, Lord. We love your presence this morning, Lord. And we won't stop worshiping you. We won't stop worshiping you. Lord, overtake this place. Overtake our lives this morning. Hallelujah. We celebrate you, oh God. We celebrate you, oh God. We're here for you this morning. We've come for you this morning, Lord God. We're in this place corporately. We just thank you, Father, for the unity. We thank you, Father, for the one accord. We won't stop worshiping you we won't stop praising you father we bless your name this morning I thank you father resurrect every dead thing in here shake everything that's distracted tear down everything that's not like you Lord God do it Lord God to your glory father we thank you this morning oh God we worship you Lord we worship you Lord you're worthy of the praise hallelujah father I celebrate you in this place I celebrate celebrate you in this place father I thank you that this is your house oh God I bring you the gift of my praise I bring you the gift of my worship father God glory to your name this morning you alone are worthy father thank you for loving us thank you for saving us thank you for revelation knowledge in this place father the revealed presence of God your glory being revealed to us father God show us who you are so we can know who we are this morning father Hallelujah to your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord God. 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 We bless you this morning. We honor you, Father. We celebrate you. Hallelujah, Father God. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. We can't do it without you, Father. We can't move forward without you, Lord God. We need your strength. We ask that you come into our hearts this morning. Father God, tear down, Lord God, those things that would cause us to be bitter, Father. Remove unforgiveness out of our hearts this morning, Father God. Give us a mindset that seeks you and you only. Give us a mindset, Father God, that exalts you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We surrender our agendas this morning. We surrender our plans this morning. We're not controlling it, Father God. We give you control. We yield to you this morning, Father God. Every thought, every instrument, every voice, every body, Father, we give it to you this morning, Father. Our words to you is have your way, Lord God. Have your way this morning. Have your way, oh God. Have your way in this place, Father. Strengthen today, Father. Comfort today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, you're a holy God. Draw from the north, the south, the east, and the west, those that you are calling to hear your word, Father God. Reveal yourself this morning, Lord God. God. Reveal yourself this morning, Lord God. We bless you. We thank you, Father, and we lift you up in this place. Thank you for inhabiting the praises of your people. Hallelujah. 
We're getting ready to go before the Lord and worship, but can you lift your hands and just speak well of God? Can you lift your hands and say something to the Lord this morning? Bless his name this morning. Can we lift our hands and bless the name of the Lord this morning? My prayer for you is that God will touch you in a way that you've never been touched by him this morning. Worship with the worship team. Hallelujah. Who's ready to worship the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Everywhere you are, just yeah. tell your neighbor, I'm ready. I'm ready. I am ready. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited this morning. God has been good to me. I'm here. I'm standing without a cane. Amen. I'm ready to worship. Let's do this. Put your hands together.
us this morning. Thank you Hallelujah. for this praise in our hearts and on our lips. You, we Jesus. adore you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God, you are so good. You, Who knows that we serve an amazing God? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Lord, that your spirit is in this house, God, and that you're moving this morning. You're meeting us in our place of need, God. God, We just thank you.
in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Come on. Come on. So I want you guys to sing. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Okay? Can you guys sing with me? Okay, let's do this. Let's build it up, though. Okay, because I'm still all the way up here. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Let's do this. Come on. Yeah. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. You got a line inside of those hearts. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, come on. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy. We lift up your soul. You got a line inside of those hearts. Get up and praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome to Connect. Welcome you all that are standing in the house of the Lord on this morning. Hallelujah. Don't you just feel good? Aren't you glad you made it in the house this morning? Aren't you just glad you made it in the house this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just thank Jesus for his presence in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. You may all take your seats if you can. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Again, we just thank God for his presence in this place on this morning. I don't want to have church without him. I don't want to have church without him. With Jesus, things are effective. With Jesus, things happen. With Jesus, things are transformed. With Jesus, people are healed. With Jesus, people are delivered. Hallelujah. With Jesus, we can't have church without Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He's just that good. Amen. Oh, Jesus, we are in store. We are in store this morning for something great. Something great. Hallelujah. Somebody came in here not feeling well in their body. Somebody came in here discouraged, feeling hopeless. 
Somebody came in here, didn't know or don't know what's going to happen this evening. But guess what? There is answers for you today. You're not here on accident. God is speaking right now. Amen. Glory be to God. Oh, Jesus. I'm super excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'd just like again to welcome you to Connect Church. Welcome who are watching online. God bless you. Stay connected. Stay tuned in. It was not by accident that you tuned in. Stay connected. There is a word just for your situation, a word for your celebration, a word for you today. Amen. Hallelujah. That's all we need is a word. That's all we need. We're going to and fro, looking and asking and calling. All we need is a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. We'd like to welcome our Houston family that is watching. Hallelujah. Let's give honor to our Apostle Promise as he's watching. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just, just pray his strength. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We'd like to welcome you who are, who are here, amen, for the first time. Any first time guests in the house? Amen, my sister here. God bless you, gorgeous. Amen, amen, amen. Anybody else here for the first time? Hallelujah. Connect, let's give our guests a hand clap. Amen. And let her know that we are glad she came here on today and we want her to come back. Amen. Amen, amen. There are a couple of announcements that I would like to relate to you. Amen. I thought I had them on the screen, but I guess not. Amen. Amen. We are going to our fourth week of prayer revival. Amen. Amen. My announcements are here, y'all. So y'all can, as you listen to me, you can get a visual. Amen. For those of you who are taking notes. All right. So we're going into our fourth week of revival, prayer revival. Praise God. And that is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Things are happening. Things are changing. Hallelujah. We're looking for answers. We have to pray. Hallelujah. And some may say, well, I don't pray that long. That's all right. Sometimes you can't even say a word. All you can do is just lift your hands. Hallelujah. So come on, let's partner together and come on out every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Amen. Um, next Saturday, which is May 28th, we're having our ministry and servant leadership meeting. If you are a server, if you're serving, if you're a leader or a minister or a servant in ministry, please come out, come on out to this training. This is next Saturday from 10 to 12 p.m. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all talk talk back to me now. I know y'all reading the announcements too. That's that's good. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. Also, our new members training, if you you've decided to connect with Connect, we're having that training on June 5th. That's that's a Sunday at 1020 prior to service, okay? So Sunday, June 5th is our new members training. So if you're just deciding, or even if you, you're kind of in limbo and you're like, I just want more information about Connect, please come on out to this meeting. Praise God. I'm not going to look at nobody, but um, <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> so again, if you've been coming to Connect and you want to be connected, come on out June 5th at 1020. If you want additional information, please see Pastor Brandy. Just wave your hand, Pastor. There she is right there. Please see Pastor Brandy for that additional information. Amen. Do we? Oh, let me not forget. June 19th, the Sunday, is Father's Day. Right? Did y'all remember that? All right. So we are getting ready to celebrate and honor our fathers. Amen. Amen. I see uh, Minister Antoinette in the back. <laughs> Amen. So she's ready. Praise God. So we want to honor our fathers on that Sunday. Start inviting men in your life that have, that, have, that have influenced you, your fathers, your godfathers, your grandfathers. Invite men. Amen. Come on out. Let's fill the place with all type of strong men in the house on that Sunday. Praise God. All right. All right. Let me see. I'm, I'm, I'm hasting through these announcements. There's a couple. Who's graduating this year? Class of 2022, put your hands in the air. Sally, don't be shy, girl. The song said, don't be shy. I know, not, I know Sally's graduating this year. We want to honor our graduates. Hey, Amen. So, Sally, I'm going to put your name on the list. Praise God. All right. I know I'll put her on the spot. That's all right. I love you, boo. <laughs> okay. Just looking ahead, July 30th, we're having our miracle and prophetic service. Okay. So, mark your calendars for that. Amen. I would not 
miss this service. Again, it's a miracle and prophetic service. So guess what? That means you're going to come back and tell about the goodness of the Lord because miracles are going to happen in this service. Amen? Amen. So mark your calendars for that. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So I believe this concludes my announcements. Amen. And they're all on the board. I'm going to call forth Minister Margaret as she comes forth to take us into our next phase of this service. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm still up there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you about my God. He's good. He's good. You know, they have different forms of worship. Praise and worship is one form of prayer. Praise and worship is a prayer point. Hallelujah. So with praise and worship, God, you bring the presence of God down and he moves things in your home. He moves your enemies away. So praise and worship is important. Another point of worship is offering. Hallelujah. Your tithe and offering. How many of you know that 100% of your income belongs to God? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. All of it. All, all of it belongs to God. And God said, give me 10% and I will multiply the nairi. The reason why the nairi is not is not enough. You can't get God's money. Is because you are, you know, you didn't give the ten percent. Because God wants you to tithe. You know why? Because He's training you as a manager. When you tithe, you show that you're honest. When you tithe, you show you're faithful. When you tithe, you show that you're loyal. So tithing is not about money. It's about God training you to be a manager. And if you can't tithe, God can't trust you because you're not honest. You are not faithful. Hallelujah! All the character of a manager. You don't have it. So you're asking God, use me. He can't because he's using the tithe, hallelujah, and offering to train you. Let me tell you what happened. I've been tithing and, and, and for since 1984. I've been tithing and I've never borrowed, hallelujah. I've been given into the house of God like we have this building where God has a building. He wants you to give offering. He wants you to support the altar, to build the altar. I'm telling you right now, and when this building came up, I took everything I had from the bank and I sent it. And the devil said, how are you going to buy gas? I said, that's God's business. Hallelujah. In two days, somebody wired me, it sold me $1,000. And I kept giving. I'm here to give you testimony that Wednesday, Wednesday, this last Wednesday, I closed on three properties. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. He can do the same for you. Because I sold into this building. And I sold into that building. Hallelujah. It's not about how much you have. It's about, it could be $5. It doesn't matter. It's about sacrificial giving. I challenge you today to give. And see what God will do. And I'm about, hallelujah, to shoot up my numbers in my hospice. Someone told me I have 10 patients. And they wired me 7 patients. My, my hospital is about to blow up because of tithe and offering. I challenge you today to challenge God. Put your offering together and bring it here. Hallelujah. I don't care if it's five dollars. I don't have to tell you about Malachi. You know the word. You just need to be obedient and trust God. Continue. Put your tithe together. Put your offering together and trust God and see what God is going to do. This house is a house of abundance. I'm telling you, hallelujah. Those that don't have vision, hallelujah, perish. The vision in this house is to bring souls in, hallelujah, through our praise and worship. So let's tithe and let's give, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we have some music, please? Come on, come on, bring your tithe. Put it together. Oh, okay. Okay, oh, sorry. Thank you, uh, Minister. <laughs> okay, your tithe and offering, you can do Verna, Verna Connect Church, Cash App, Connect Church. You can text GIVE to 424 5437604. Zell Connect Church, Hallelujah, Ontario at gmail.com. PayPal, the Kingdom Arena g at gmail.com those of you that are online you can give through these ways hallelujah and god will surely surely bless you come on we can stand now and
God, we thank you for this offering right now in the name of Jesus. For they have given out of their heart, Lord. Multiply the basket, Lord Jesus. Multiply just like you multiply the fish and the bread, Lord. Let it stretch and, and continue to continue to do all that you are sent it to do. Let this money multiply. We, we pray the, the prayer of multiplication right now in the name of Jesus. And bless those that have brought their tithe and offering. And bless them some more so they can bring more. Father God, I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. and give Jesus the praise. Hallelujah. Can you give Jesus the praise this morning? Okay, so I'm going to need I'm going to need you to please come this side everybody on that side. Can you please come here? Thank you so much just be on this side. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, look at your neighbor and with a smile on your face and tell them, welcome to God's presence. Hallelujah. Do you have the right neighbor this morning? <laughs> Come on, tell them you are looking so beautiful this morning and I'm so blessed to be sitting next to you. Hallelujah. It's good to see some people's faces that I have not seen in a while this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. And welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody online. Did I leave my phone there? Can you get my phone for me? Praise God. Welcome everybody in Houston. Welcome everybody watching from Africa. Welcome everybody watching from all over the world. We love you. We thank you for being consistent and being our e-members. Hallelujah. Commenting and showing us some love. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we want to honor Apostle Promise in Houston this morning. Hallelujah. I just came back this morning. We were in um, Atlanta doing ministry together and it just landed this morning. Uh, I, I, I have not slept, but I know that the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. So as I was coming this side, he was uh, going to Houston. Praise God. So keep praying for us. Keep praying for this ministry as God is expanding us and God is stretching us and God is taking us to new territories. Hallelujah. Praise God. God has a great plan for this church. And I'm so glad that you are part of it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I have good news for you. Uh, oh, I, I, I hear two people say, yeah, amen. Like, <laughs> people like good news. Some people don't. <laughs> well, I have a good announcement for you that Apostle Promise is going to be in the house next Sunday. Praise God. So I know that we have missed him, including me. We have missed him. We have missed his fatherly counsel and his, you know, just ministry as a father of the house. So I know we are all going to be excited to be in the house to receive him once again. He's been pouring in the church in Houston. So he's coming back to pour on us next week. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna worship forever. I'm gonna worship forever. I'm gonna worship forever. Worship with me, son. I'm gonna worship forever. 
You're going to speak in our spirit this morning. We thank you because it's going to change our lives for the better. And the glory will all go back to you. In the name of Jesus. Can you clap your hands and give God the praise this morning? Hallelujah. Can I hear you shout for his glory this morning? Can I hear you get excited in his presence? Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Look at your neighbor said, God has a future for you. You got the wrong neighbor. Come on, look at another person. Tell them, God has a future for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God has a future that he prefers for you. He has a future that he predestined for you. He chose for you. He, he, he orchestrated a great future for you even before you came in your mama's womb. Do you believe that this morning? Hallelujah, you were destined for greatness. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You were destined for greatness. But for that future to come to pass over your life, you need to allow God. You need to allow God to order your step. The Bible says that the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. The steps of the righteous are ordered by who? Yeah, yeah, the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. Hallelujah. So, so the enemy doesn't want us to, 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 to follow what God wants us to follow. He doesn't want us to follow the blueprint of God. He, he wants us to do whatever that our flesh feels like doing. Even though God has prepared a good future for us. Even though God has orchestrated a good ending for us. The devil does not want us to see that. He wants us to be clouded. By what we are going through in the moment, by the storms of life, by the, by the situations of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But can you look at your neighbor this morning and say, my steps are ordered. I, didn't, I don't think you said it the way I said it. I say, say, my steps are ordered. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So when, when we talk about steps, we're talking about decisions. My decisions are ordered. I don't just do something because I feel like doing it. I don't just make a decision because I just feel like it's a good thing to do. My, my, my decisions are ordered because God ordering my steps is God ordering my decisions. Praise God. How many of you believe that this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I should be, I should be in agreement with God. 
with what he has already chosen for me, with what he's, he's already predestined for me. I should be in agreement by doing what? By being obedient to his instructions, by being obedient to his word, by, by being obedient to what, to what he's telling me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I should be in agreement with God with what he already chosen, with what he already written by making decisions that align with his plan for my life. Praise God. The Bible says in, in, the, book, in the book of uh, uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30 verse 19. He says, this day I call the heavens and the earth and as a, as a witness against you that I have sent before you life and death. So God gives us a choice. He has predestined a great future for us. He has given us a beautiful destiny, but he will not force that beautiful destiny in our lives. He has given us a choice. So he says, choose before this day, before me this day, if you will choose life or death, blessings or curses, now choose life so that you and your children may live. So he's saying in other words, I prefer you to choose life, but it's still your choice. My own plan, my own will for you is that you will choose life. Because I, I, I love you that much. But how many of you know that when you love somebody, you allow them to have autonomy? You don't just budge and just do things and control them just because you love them. How many of you know that? Like when you love somebody, you give them freedom to make choices, to make decisions. So God has a preferred future, a, pre a preferred destiny for us, but he says, choose. What do you want? He's giving you a choice. If he's, he's giving you a choice. Hallelujah. But the enemy wants you, the enemy wants you to roll a dice with your life. He wants you to play games with your life. He wants you to, 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 to guess with your life. To play with your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But because you know what? When, when you choose, when you choose what you see, you are choosing what you don't see at the same time. When you are choosing what you see, you're choosing what you don't see. So the enemy will play on that. So the enemy, the enemy will not just come to you and give you a heartache. He will not, he will not say, yeah, here's a, here's a heartache. Choose this heartache. He's not going to do that. But he's going to present it as a relationship. He's going to say to you, here's a relationship. Come on, don't ask God. Don't pray about it. Don't seek help. Don't, don't go to your pastor. Don't talk to nobody about it. Just enter into this relationship. After all, you've been waiting for God to give you a man. You've been waiting for God to give you a woman. This is the opportunity. Jump into it. And that's how the enemy paints the picture. So when you choose for to, right now, you're not just choosing for today. You're choosing for the future. And your choices have consequences. And your consequences don't just affect you. How many of you know that your consequences are not just going to affect you, but it will affect your children. It can affect the people in your household. It can affect your husband. It can affect your wife. Because when you choose without listening to God, you can be in trouble. And the enemy knows that he, he wants to use that because he knows when, when you are trapped in that state of depression, when you are stepped in that, in that state of heartache, that's when he gets you in the corner so that you will say God is not good. God is not faithful. Praise God. So, so, so when you make those decisions, it affects a lot of things. It doesn't just affect you individually. You make a bad business decision, it affects your marriage, it affects your children, it affects your finances, it affects your peace, it affects everything. Praise God. So the enemy don't just bring it as heartache. He doesn't just bring it as something that is going to give you depression at the end of the day. But he just presents it as a business opportunity, as a, as a, as a relationship, as something that is beautiful. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so, so when it comes to decisions, 
when it comes to, to, to areas that are consequential in our lives, we must learn to listen and obey the voice of God. Can you look at your neighbor and say, listen and obey? I told you, you are next to a wrong neighbor this morning. Come on, say, tell, talk, talk to somebody. I said, listen and obey. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The more heartbreaks you deal with, the more your heart is hardened, the more you run away from God. And, and the Bible says only the pure at heart will see God. So the devil knows that. Because when, when he tricks you into making decisions that will put you in trouble, he knows. He knows it's going to take you away from God. Because you're going to curse God. You're going to stop going to church. You're going to think that, you know, nobody, nobody, nobody likes me anymore. Nobody wants to talk to me anymore. And you, you close yourself in and you start getting depressed. And all these things the enemy has seen already. He has already played it. But we don't see it because we as Christians are not really obedient to the voice of God. When God says no to something, we still want to do our own thing. Praise God. So I want us to look at, at the book of Luke chapter 5. We're going to start reading from verse 1 to 7. Is anybody getting blessed this morning already? Hallelujah. Only two people. Is anybody getting blessed this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are in Luke chapter, chapter 5. We're going to read from verse 1 all the way to 7. If you get it or you already got it, can you just shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Do we have it on the screen? Yes. Let's go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. mm. Amen. Praise God. So if you want, if you are that person that wants topics, uh, you want to write something down, I mean, you, you want a heading for this message, so it's, it's called throw in the net. Praise God. Can, can somebody say throw in the net? So we see Jesus here. The Bible says he was teaching and the multitude was just growing. The, the crowd was growing and then he decides to go to Simon's boat so that he can get just a feather away from the crowd so that he can teach effectively. So he goes inside Simon Peter's boat and starts teaching them. And all of a sudden he tells him, he said to him, let's go into the deep. Let's launch into the deep. Praise God. And then the, the, the Bible says that um, they go in and then he tells them to throw in the net. Now remember that Simon is a fisherman, but Jesus is a carpenter. Right? Do we know that? Right? Simon is a fisherman, but Jesus is what? A carpenter. So how does a carpenter tell a fisherman what to do? So Simon is like, go in, throw the net. Wait a minute. I'm a fisherman. Listen, Mr. Carpenter. We've been doing this the whole night. We've been at this the whole night. We've been toiling the whole night. In fact, I've even started washing the nets because I've given up. No fish are coming in today. And you are telling me to throw in the net? We've been doing this all night. Caught nothing. I've washed the net. In other words, 
I decided to quit. I'm not doing it again. Praise God. The emptiness of my net caused me to quit. Frustration caused me to quit. Working on nights, yielding no results has caused me to quit. The emptiness will cause you to want to throw in the towel. Because when you do something over and over and over, even, even if you think that maybe God is in it, and you keep doing it over and over, you start giving up. Because you don't see results. So the emptiness sometimes will cause us to want to quit. So Simon was like, I, I wash my net. I'm done. But Jesus said, just because you finish, don't mean I'm finished, Simon. Just because you think you're done, don't mean I'm done, Simon. Hallelujah. Just when you thought that it's good for you to wash the net and go home, I say go and throw in the net. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want you to let it down again. I want you to try again. I want you to go back again. I want you to do it again. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning that has tried it, that has, that has worked hard and they felt like their work has not yielded any fruit. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning that has tried it in their life, in their career, in their marriage, over their children. They've tried and tried and tried and you, you don't think that you are getting any result. The voice of God through me is telling you to go back and try again this morning. Hallelujah. The voice of God is saying, go back and try again. Go and apply again. Go and knock that door again. Go and throw in the net again. Hallelujah. Don't give up just yet. Praise God. Let it down again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that Jesus will make you eat your words? Hallelujah. Whatever you said, I'm never going to do again. I'm never, I'm never going to forgive this person again. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm not doing this again. And Jesus will say, go back again. Go do it again. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so what Simon Peter does is not argue with Jesus. He listens and he, he obeys. He says, even though I, I'm, an ex, I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm, I'm an expert in this field, even though I know a lot about fishing, even though I know you are a competitor and you don't know nothing about fishing, I have a degree in physiology. I know everything about this. But you know what? I'm going to listen. I'm going to obey. Because I realize that you, Jesus, know best. How many of you know that Jesus knows best? Praise God. Hallelujah. Because if I was so good at doing this, I was not going to end up with an empty net in the first place. So why not just obey? Why not just listen to your instruction? Why not just yield to your voice and do what you are asking me to do? Praise God. So he goes in and do what Jesus says that he, uh, what Jesus said he should do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, I'm going to drop my intellect. I'm going to drop my own proficiency. I'm going to drop my training. I know I've been to school. I have all the PPD and a PhD and a DDD and everything. I have it all, but I'm going to choose to listen to God's instruction. What are you saying to me, God? Hallelujah. Praise God. So in verse six, the Bible said they caught so much fish. Come on, somebody say, so much. So much fish. And then in verse 7, it says, they signaled their partners to come and help them. Because there was a lot of fish. Now they had to signal some people to come and help them, their partners. Because remember what the Bible says? There were two boats, boats that were parked. And Jesus chose to go on Simon's boat. So there was another boat that nobody, it's just, it's just that one person or two people. I don't know how many people were there. But those people were there just waiting when Jesus entered in, into Simon Peter's boat and started teaching. So they beckoned on those people. Come. Come and get fish. Come and help us. We got, a, 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 we got our miracle. Now Simon Peter's partners started benefiting from his decision of being obedient. The people next to him, the people around him, his family, the people, that uh, his friends, they started benefiting from his obedience. Praise God. Because he listened and he obeyed. Hallelujah. Can you imagine if those people were not willing to stay with him, to set their boat next to him? 
Was he going to call them if they decided to just leave him there and just go? I don't know about you, but I don't want somebody who is going to just come and celebrate with me when God is giving me a miracle. I want you to stick with me when my boat is empty. I want you to be right there next to me when my boat is empty. When I feel discouraged, I need you to be right next to me, hailing me, telling me it's going to be okay, telling me you can do it again, telling me we can push together, telling me I can, I can assist you. What do you want from me? How can I help? Those are the people that I want in my life. I'm not going to call you when the blessing is overflowing, when you were not with me when the boats were empty so there are some people in our lives that we need to get rid of because the only thing they know is to come when our boat is overflowing they don't want to do anything they don't want to sacrifice nothing with us they don't want us when our boat is empty when we are still building they don't want to be involved they come in and be like oh they're still building oh Connect Church is still growing. It's still building. Oh, I'll come back when the mega church. Oh, she, she's just starting a business. Uh, okay, we'll see how far it's going to go. So when the, bless, the blessing starts to overflow, I don't need those people next to me. Come on, ask your neighbor, are you that person? Are they giving you an answer? Are they giving you an answer? Hallelujah. Say, no, no, no. When God changes my story, I need you to be there because you were there when I was struggling. When my story was still unfolding, you were there. You were right there with me, pushing me and supporting me, standing with me, believing God with me, praying with me. Praise God. Those are the people I want next to me. Hallelujah. And sometimes people move their boats too fast. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, you wonder sometimes, why is God connecting me with this person? Why is God connecting me? Because this person doesn't have anything going on right now. Why is God asking me to stick with this person? Why is God asking me to, to stick with this vision, with this thing? What's going on? Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so, so sometimes God will connect you to some people, not because of today, not because of where they are, but because of where they are going. And if you obey, if you listen, you're going to benefit from that. Hallelujah. How many of you love benefits? Hallelujah. So, 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 so if you stick with them long enough, you'll be able to benefit from the harvest that they're going to get. Hallelujah. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, don't leave me too soon. Come on, look at another person and say, don't leave me too soon. I may not have it now, but just wait, wait, wait. God is working on it. God is working on me. God is working on something. Something is about to break. Something is about to unfold. Don't leave me just yet. Don't throw away the towel just yet. You don't know what God is doing. God is in the back scene cooking something awesome. And you don't want to be missing when it's time to enjoy it. Praise God. Don't leave me too soon. So it was the same boat, the same net, the same lake, the wrong time. But because Jesus said to drop it. Hey, because Jesus said to drop it. Hallelujah. It was the right time because Jesus said to drop it. It was the same boat, the same net, the same person, the same lake. It was the wrong time though it looked like, but it was the right time because Jesus said so. If Jesus says it, it's the right time. It doesn't matter how dry it looks. It doesn't matter how impossible it looks. If Jesus said it, you can take his word to the back because he is faithful. He's not a man that is should lie. The Bible says whatever he promises, he keeps. He sends his word so that the word will fulfill that which he has been sent to do. His word does not come back wandering, just not having answers. His word goes and comes back with answers, with fruits. Praise God. So even if it doesn't look that great, if God said it, stick with it. If God said it, move with it. If God said it, do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. In verse 4, the Bible says, When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Go into the deep. 
Woo! Because you're getting ready to catch something, Simon. You're getting ready to catch something. Something is about to fill your net. Something is about to overflow. I'm cooking something. Just, just listen. Just obey. Go into the deep. I know the deep doesn't look like it's going to yield anything, but just listen. Hallelujah. When I say move, move. Hallelujah. So, so it wasn't Simon's expertise. It wasn't Simon's hands that caught that fish that day. It was his obedience. He listened. He obeyed. I don't know what God is telling you and you are wrestling with it in your head. And you keep asking yourself, is this God? God, how can you lead me into this valley of dry bones? This place is deserted. I don't know. I don't know. Is that you, God? Are you leading me to start this business? Is this idea from you? Praise God. It wasn't his expertise, but it was his obedience. Because it didn't matter what Jesus said. If Simon didn't listen, if Simon didn't listen, it doesn't matter what Jesus said. Remember the choice that I talked about in the beginning? Because he gives us choices to make. So it, it doesn't matter what Jesus would have said. If he, if he chose to just sit there and not move and not budge and don't go to the deep, he was not going to catch no fish that day. So Jesus can be the one speaking and telling you to do something, but if you don't do it, then nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. Hallelujah. So, so he, he was submitting his ex expertise to Jesus' instructions. He was submitting his own will to Jesus' instructions. Hallelujah. The Red Sea wasn't parted just because God said so. Do you know that? The Red Sea didn't just part because God said so. Moses obeyed what God said. Hallelujah. The Jericho walls didn't fall down because Joshua, because, because God said so. It's because Joshua obeyed. Hallelujah. Abraham didn't become the father of many nations because God said it. God wanted it for him, but if he didn't obey, it was not going to happen. God wanted those Jericho walls to fall, but if Joshua didn't obey, it was not going to happen. God wanted the children of Israel to cross the Red Sea, but if there was no obedience from their leader Moses, it was never going to happen. They were going to be consumed. They were going to be killed by the army of Egypt. Come on, look at somebody, say, listen and obey. Look at another person, say, listen and obey. Woo, could it be that what we call problems are not problems, it's just obedient problems. It's not a problem, it's just that you're not obedient. You are not in any problem, it's just that you don't want to listen. Could it be that you are, you, are, you are crying right now and you're just crying for God to save you and help you? Take me out, oh God, save me, oh God. And God said, hey, I have spoken a long time ago. You just have to do it. Do what I ask you to do. You just have to listen and obey. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so, so we have to be obedient, children of God. If God is talking to you about it, it's because he's getting ready to do something about it. So you just need to obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So three things that's going to help you listen and obey in this season. Three things you need. Hallelujah. Somebody say three things. Number one, revelation. Revelation. See, if, if I, if I'm thirsty and I want to drink this bottle of, um, I want to drink water from this bottle, but the bottle is covered and I'm thirsty and I just keep passing by. I'm like, I'm thirsty. Oh, Jesus, I'm thirsty. Lord, send water. Lord, quench my thirst. Quench my thirst, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. 
And I keep speaking in tongues about my thirst. And yet there is water. Right here where I am standing. Just in my vicinity. There is water to quench my thirst. And I keep praying about it. And I keep talking to God about it. And God says, I've provided water. You just need revelation. I've provided water. I've provided something that's going to quench your thirst. You just need revelation. Praise God. So I just need to unveil this. I need to unveil this. Then it's going to work for me. Praise God. Come on, look at your neighbor. Said, unveil, unveil, unveil. There has to be an unveiling. Hallelujah. I can't keep claiming water come to me. I can't keep binding and say every spirit holding my water, every spirit causing me to thirst, I bind you in the name of Jesus. No, I just need a revelation that God has already provided the water. Praise God. Hallelujah. I just need the unveiling. You need the unveiling. You need the veil to be pulled off so you can benefit from this water. Come on, tell your neighbor, pull off the veil. Come on, look at another person, say, pull off the veil. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pull off the veil. God has already provided. God has already given us everything that we need. He's not going to create anything else. We just need revelation. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, and, and some people, some people... Don't believe that God is speaking because really in the church sometimes we have misused the word God is saying. And so people don't, don't want to listen anymore. They won't obey sometimes because that, that word has been abused a lot in church. God is saying, God is saying even when God is not saying. Praise God. So, so, so what is your job there is to filter. You have the spirit of God right on the inside of you. He lives on the inside of you. So you should be able to discern. You should be able to filter whatever word that comes out. That you don't just gobble everything that comes up and just take it, take it, take it. That's why we get disappointed and we talk about we have church hurt. And we are leaving church because we are ourselves are not spiritual. We are always running after prophets. We always want people to declare words over us. We always want people to say things over us. We don't believe that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same spirit is living on the inside of us. The same spirit. Praise God. So you need revelation. Number two, you need intimacy. He wants a relationship with you. God is he's not a God of one night stands. He wants fellowship. He wants a relationship. Praise God. He wants you to be connected with him. Because if we are connected, it's easy. It's easy for you to hear my voice. If we are connected, it's easy for you to know that it's me that is talking. It's easy for you to listen when I'm talking. It's easy for you to be obedient because you trust that it's me. You are not confused. Because you have relationship. So don't ask, how am I going to hear the voice of God? How am I going to know it's God leading me? Stick closer to God and you will learn how to hear his voice. Have intimacy with God. I tell you, there might be a thousand people in the room, but when my husband is speaking, I'm going to know that's Apostle Promise talking right there. Because I have known him. I have stayed with him. I have eaten with him. I have been in the same room, in the same bed with him. I know his voice. I don't just see him once a week and then spend another six months and, and then come back again and then spend another one year away doing my own thing and then come back and say, hey, I'm here again. Can you please help me? No, I have relationship. I have intimacy. It's not just on a Sunday service. It's not just on once a week. It's a relationship that is ongoing. It's a relationship that is daily. I speak to him. He speaks to me. I love on him. He loves on me we know each other we get each other we understand each other we communicate with each other we dwell in the presence together praise God I don't seek his face only when I need something from him because he's not Santa Claus
was. I don't just go to him every time I need a gift. He lives in me and I live in him. We have communion. We are connected. Praise God. And so there's no way we have that kind of relationship and I would not know his voice. Is somebody getting this this morning? Are you hearing me this morning? There is no way you'll be that close to God and you will not understand his voice. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say intimacy. Praise God. Some people know their pastor's voice more than they know God's voice. Some people know prophet's voice more than they know God's voice. You need to know God's voice for yourself. Praise God. Get closer. Number three, you need to put to death. Put to death some things in your life. Come and look at your neighbor again. Say, put to death some things in your life. So we need to put to death some things in our lives. Something like pride. Something like what? God hates pride. Especially religious pride. He hates it. God can correct you. You know it all. You know from Genesis to Revelation. You know when God said that and said that and said this and said this. Nobody can tell you anything because you got it all figured out. God speaks to you and doesn't speak to anybody else. You know how to correct everybody. Everybody's a sinner. You are the only one that's holy. We have to put to death that, that pride. Because pride causes us not to be teachable. When you have pride, you can never teach somebody who has pride because they think they know it all. Praise God. So we have to, we have to die to our flesh. We have to receive correction when there's time to be corrected. You cannot know it all. Nobody knows it all. Even the biggest bishop doesn't know it all. I don't know it all. Sometimes I miss it. Sometimes I try to figure it out. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, God, please help me. Nobody knows it all. But you have to be humble enough to admit that. You need God's help. Somebody say pride. So, so God wants us to get rid of pride. The Pharisee type of pride. Pharisee type of pride. That religious pride. Those kinds of minds that are unteachable. That God cannot correct you. Hallelujah. The ego. God needs to get rid of the ego in us. Do you know that the Pharisees were still waiting on the Messiah when the Messiah was already present right in front of them? And they kept just arguing with the Messiah. They kept being prideful. The Messiah was there. They kept praying. We need the Messiah. Lord, when are you bringing the Messiah? That is exactly what I was saying. You keep praying for water because you're thirsty and the water is right in front of you. They kept praying for the Messiah. The Messiah was right there in their midst. But their pride could not allow them to see him. The unteachable spirit did not allow them to see him. Praise God. We need to put that, that, those habits to death. Hallelujah. We need to mute those voices that are too loud, that are louder than the voice of God in our lives. We need to sometimes spend time quietly in the presence of God and mute some voices. Social media, it's a good tool to even spread the gospel, but sometimes we need to tune ourselves off from those things because they, they, they block us from hearing from God sometimes. We watch some things there, we start comparing ourselves, we start thinking that nothing, is good, nothing good is going on in our lives because we start seeing somebody, we went to high school together, having this and that and getting married and having this house and posting fake things and posting a girl with their husband, their wife, like uh, couples, goals and couple nothing because probably they are not as happy as they portray it on Facebook. And you, you stay in your room crying resenting them having jealousy 
So we need to, we need to, we need to just put to death those things. Hallelujah. Is anybody getting blessed this morning? Is somebody listening this morning? Is somebody hearing the voice of God as I speak this morning? Hallelujah. You know, somebody, some people, not somebody, some people, because even I do it sometimes and God help me. We take our, even our phone to the bathroom. Many of you do that. <laughs> I know you don't, don't lie in the house of God. We are so engrossed with this thing. We even take our phone to the bathroom and we are. God cannot speak to you anywhere. In the bathroom, you are on the phone. On the bed, you are on the phone. Driving to work, you are on the phone. When will God speak? Maybe he's going to speak to you in the dream now because that's the only place that you are not busy. Maybe that's the only place you are not busy. It's like, okay, let me just show you a vision while you are asleep, when you are peaceful and sleeping and you are done with all this busyness. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to just be cognizant of these things and try to, we just, I'm not saying social media is bad, but sometimes really we have to just put it away. Spend some time listening to that worship music and allow the Spirit of God to work through you. Let the peace of God flow as you worship Him. Let the peace of God flow as you go to work. You know, every day, every single day, I lie not in the Holy Ghost. When I'm going to work, it's either I'm listening to the Word or worship. Because I want my spirit to be right by the time I get to that place. Because I know my kind of job, I'm going to hear a lot of things. Like these people, this person is going to say this, say that, say that. And I have to be in that right mind to be able to carry. Because I'm holding space for people who have mental health issues. I'm holding space for people who have marriage problems. I'm holding space for people who are being abused. For people who are going through terrific situations. Like terrible situations. Trauma. Children being abused by their own fathers and mothers being abused by their own husbands. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. So if your spirit is not prepared before you go there, by the time you leave, you'll be holding, carrying the whole world into your shoulders because you are not, you are not prepared. You are not spiritually prepared. So you need to fill yourself, feed yourself with the word, feed yourself with worship before you go to work so that when you go, do that job with all ease because the Holy Spirit has already prepared you. You're ready and the Holy Spirit can even tell you, do this, do that, do it like that. You get a customer that is agitated, you get a customer that doesn't want to listen and the Holy Spirit will say, just do it like that. Do it, talk to them this way because you are already saturated with His presence. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we need to, we need to do away with some of these things so that our spirit can be connected so that we can hear from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should stop comparing ourselves to other people. I should be further than I am right now. Who told you? Social media told you? Not God. We should stop being over ambitious. Those are all the things that blocks the word of God, the voice of God. Hallelujah. Starting things that God didn't ask you to start. Because everybody is praying for somebody on Facebook. Now you are also doing something and God did not ask you to do it. Now you are apostle, prophet, evangelist, uh, uh, bishop on Facebook. God did not ask you to do all that. And now you feel like people are responding on Facebook. They are typing amen. You're like, I'm going to start my own church. People are responding. I have five likes and I have ten comments. I'm going to go and open my church. Praise God. We need to stop being over ambitious. We have to listen and be led by the Spirit of God. We can't play with people's lives going on telling people God is saying this when God did not say it. 
These are God, God died for these people. You can't just be careless with their lives. What do you think God will do to you? Leading his people, the people that he, the church that he, he died for, leading them astray with false prophecy, lying, and all these things that we see happening on Facebook and everywhere. Hallelujah. So, so, Apostle always says, we don't jump high, we grow up. We don't jump up, we grow up. Allow God to take you through the process. Don't be over ambitious. The process is not easy. That's why everybody just wants it fast. It costs a lot. It costs your time. It costs your sleep. It costs your finances. It costs your energy. It costs your family. It costs everything. It's not easy to do what we do. It's not easy to just go and do great things out there. Because you see somebody doing it, you want to do it when God say, when, when God didn't say you're going to get frustrated. If I had a choice, I wouldn't be a pastor, I'm telling you. That's the truth. I would just be living my life and just enjoying my life and let's, babe, let's go to Vegas, let's go to Hawaii, let's... I just came back from Atlanta like... 5 and 6 a.m. flight. I had to be running. I did not sleep 24 hours because that's what it cost to do this. Do I want to do it? No. But I'm listening and obeying. Praise God. And I know some people in this church who sacrifice even their finances, who sacrifice going all out, who show up Wednesday, show up Sunday, even when it's not convenient. Sacrifice because they want God. They are obeying the voice of God. They, they, they are listening to what God has told them to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, Another thing is we have to also be careful who we associate with. Because association produces, produces assimilation. So when we associate with people, you start becoming like them. You start speaking the same language. You start talking like them. You start doing things like them. So we have to be careful who we associate with. If you are around people with selfish ambition... You're going to be like that too. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, and the Bible says, do nothing out of what? Do nothing out of what? Bible scholars. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop here this morning. I want us to pray. It's not morning anymore. It's daytime. Can we stand up on our feet? Because this word is for everybody, including me. This word is for everybody, including me. Thank you, Jesus. Was somebody blessed this, this day? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I declare that you're getting ready to make the best decisions of your entire life this year. I think only three people believe that. I said, you're getting ready to make the best decisions in this season. In the name of Jesus, you are getting ready to be led by the Spirit into the right places, making the right decisions, taking the right decisions for your family, leading your family into the right place. If you are a man in this house, I pray for you that God will give you wisdom, that God will give you knowledge, that you will not lead your family astray, that you will not make decisions that will cost you your marriage, that you will not make decisions that will cost you your finances, that your family will not be a casualty due to your decisions. In the name of Jesus. I declare it over everybody trying to figure something out this morning. You're trying to figure out starting a business, if you should go back to school, whatever it is that you're trying to figure out, I pray for clarity this morning. I pray for divine visitation this morning, that God will reveal himself 
even in your sleep, even in your dreams, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the power in the name of Jesus that God will send the right people who will help your vision, who will help your hand, who will lift your head up and take your vision to the next level. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, declare with your mouth. Say, I receive revelation. Come on, somebody say, I receive revelation for my next level. Come on, say, the veil is lifted. Come on, say, the veil is lifted. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. I receive revelation for my next level. I receive revelation for my next level. Ah, the veil is lifted. The veil is removed. I'm going to see clearly. I'm going to hear clearly. In the name of Jesus, I receive revelation. Yes, 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 yes. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Woo! Revelation for my children. Revelations for my career, revelation for my business, revelation for my family in Jesus' name. Say, I declare in the name of Jesus. Come on, say it again in the name of Jesus. I declare acceleration over every dry area of my life. Say it again. I declare in the name of Jesus speed, acceleration. Over every dry area in my life. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Declare it, declare it. Come on, declare it. Use your mouth. Your mouth is a weapon. Use your mouth, declare it. Whatever it is that you want to see speed in in your life, whatever it is that you need acceleration in, open your mouth and declare in the atmosphere. Declare in the atmosphere. Yeah. Receive acceleration, speed, acceleration in the name of Jesus. Acceleration in the name of Jesus. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, declare once again. Say, in the name of Jesus, I declare restoration over the areas where disobedience caused me to be at loss. I declare restoration over the areas where disobedience caused me to be at loss. Come on, open your mouth. Because sometimes our disobedience is the reason why we are in the situation that we are in. Come on, open your mouth and pray for mercy. Lord, let your grace speak for me. I receive restoration. I receive restoration over every area that I have disobeyed you in the name of Jesus have mercy Jesus have mercy Jesus have mercy Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Lord hey. yes God in the name of Jesus every area where I did not listen every area where I disobeyed Lord I pray for mercy I pray for restoration in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Glory to your name. We receive revelation. We, re we receive speed, restoration. In the name of Jesus, let your grace help us, oh God. Help us by your grace, Father, to listen and obey. So we can throw in the net and catch our blessings. Help us, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give Jesus the glory. Hallelujah. Can you just praise him for one second if you know that he blessed you this morning? Yes. We thank you for your word. 
Thank you, Jesus. Remember, it's not enough just to hear the word, but to do it. So let's go out there and do the word. Let's work the word, because the word works. But we have to work the word and be obedient to God's instruction. And one of God's instruction was that we meet here every Wednesday for prayers for eight weeks through his seventh. And I know that some of you are going to repent and, and we're going to meet you here on Wednesday. Hallelujah. Which week are we on now on our prayer? Four. So we have four more weeks. So you can still jump in the train. You can still join us. These prayers are powerful. Every Wednesday, 7 p.m., this room is on fire with prayer. With prayer. And our pastor promises in the house, and he's going to be in the house this Wednesday and Sunday. So bring somebody, bring people who are sick, bring people who need God, people who are dying in the world, who are addicted to alcohol, to drugs, whatever. Bring them here, invite them, tell them there's a place where they will receive solution for their issues. Bring them here, let them be saved. Hallelujah. Are you ready to go home? Oh, you're not ready to go? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming this morning. We're going to do our declaration. What do we have on our head? Come on, somebody shout, favor on my head. What do we have on our hands? And what will God do with our feet? Speed on our feet. Love you very much, family. See you on a Wednesday, 7 p.m. God bless you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on before I forget. I have, a, I have one announcement. I don't know. I wasn't yet doing announcement. We have a concert coming up in LA this Friday. Was it announced? Okay, so we have a concert. Just Sinatch is going to be in town in Los Angeles. Phil Thompson is going to be in Los Angeles. I'm going to be in Los Angeles. So it's going to be on fire. So my husband, Apostle Promise, is organizing this. Like we've been touring and going from city to city. We were in Chicago. We were in Chicago. We just came back from Atlanta. And we were in another place in Houston. And now we are bringing it to Los Angeles. The tickets are online. If you are, if you are not following Connect Church, connect with the K, Connect Church. Go and follow this church and you're going to see all the information there. Phil Thompson, Sinatch, the, the writer and the singer of Waymaker, Miracle Worker, is going to be in Los Angeles. This is her tour and she's bringing Phil Thompson and she's bringing yours truly. And it's going to be awesome. So go and get your ticket today, 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 today. Okay? Praise God. If you need more information, go to Connect Church. Praise God. Or oh, you can see me after church. I can show you how to get your ticket. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you. We love you.